Hi everybody. With this story, we're going back to the world of version 2. If you missed the ver the if you missed the previous story, it was called Maid. Okay, this story is called Rebirth. Let's get started. I walk down the road I've always walked along, seeing it for the first time. That's because it is the first time I've seen it with these eyes. It is the first time I've walked it with these legs. And it is the first time I've inhaled the city air with these lungs. It is the first time I've been out of the apartment for days. But according to my boyfriend, Victor, it's been a year. Victor was so paranoid about my condition that he hovered nonstop. It drove me insane. I've been dead for a year. Now I'm awake. Part of me still doesn't believe it, but all I have to do is look at the yin-yang tattoo on my wrist to know that everything is different. I didn't used to have a tattoo. Everything about me is new, at least to me. I'm a walking second-hand store. Because of Victor's nanites flowing through my veins, every body part is recycled from another body, except my brain. Victor Frank is a genius the beautiful genius who never stopped working on a way to bring me back to life. I've never met a man who creates like he does, dreams like he does, loves like he does. Because Victor never gave up on me, I'm alive again. Adam, the latest tests confirm it, Victor said over the phone. There is no sign of cellular decay or tissue rejection anywhere in your body. The nanites have joined all nerve, cartilage, muscle, and bone tissue until everything works as well as your original body, maybe even better. Arterial function is optimal, lymph system is at 100%. Even my brain? I asked. I'm Adam Lamond, the luckiest man to ever exist. Not many people get a second chance to live again after being dead for a while. The few that did were only dead for a few minutes. There's a couple of cases from thousands of years ago of people who died for a few days, and then came back to life. As far as I know, I am the only man who's been dead for a year and lived to tell about it. I woke up last week. Especially your brain, Victor said. No sign of any deterioration, plaques, neuron atrophy, or lesions. The nanites have reconstructed any synapses that weren't working at peak proficiency until your brain is optimal. You are perfect inside and out. Look at me, Mom. I can even set off metal detectors, I said with a chuckle. That couldn't be helped. I needed the bolts to stabilize your neck structure, Victor said, and the nano implants have a titanium casing. Plus, the nanites integrated additional titanium into your spine to provide... Oh, that was a joke, wasn't it? Victor, I love you, I said. You are so serious sometimes, and dedicated, and smart. Have I told you in the last hour how much I love you and thanked you for saving my life? Though I had walked this street hundreds of times, it had changed since my death. The coffee shop had become a burger joint. The bench at the bus stop had now become a small hut that sheltered the bus stop. Adam, listen to me. This isn't a good idea, Victor said. At least let me come with you. No, babe. I need to do this alone, I said. Besides, my brother and his girlfriend never liked us. They don't like people with actual cerebral matter between their ears, Victor said. Victor, are you saying I'm smarter than my brother? That's the best compliment I've had since I've woken up, I said. And sexier, Victor said. You better make your new womb big enough for two, I said. I'll take that under advisement. Victor went quiet, then said, If you have to do this, Keep your skin covered so the bioorganic circuitry won't show, and keep your collar up. That should hide the metal on your neck. Don't bleed. I haven't figured out how to make the liquid polymer matrix look like blood. Avoid any electrical discharges because I'll need the new womb to adjust some of the implants to deal with the extra current, and it won't work for weeks. Like we are going to have a lightning storm again. You worry too much, I said. This is only a visit. I'll be back by dinner. Besides, my brother and his girlfriend have probably moved out of the basement by now. 
The subway station hadn't changed. I quickly took the stairs, two at a time, so I wouldn't miss my train. I still couldn't believe it. I was alive. Victor had rebuilt me from stolen body parts and experimental nanotech. My boyfriend had brought me back from the dead. Victor had done the impossible. Your parents aren't ready for this, Victor said. I don't think you're ready for this. I have to be, I said. I love you, but we'll drive each other crazy if we stay cooped up. Victor didn't say anything for a long moment. When he did, his voice quivered. Keep the line open. That way I will get immediate telemetry from your in-system processors. I don't know what extreme stress will do to the techno-organic circuitry or the nano-implants or flow regulators making sure your blood... Victor, is that your way of saying you're worried about me? I said. You've accomplished something nobody else had. Bringing you back was the only thing keeping me going, Victor said quietly. I am receiving a stable signal and am redirecting telemetry through the cell towers. I should have a continuous feed. How did you do that? I reprogrammed the data input for an immediate upload and download superseding all other transmissions. Think of Netflix made of ninjas, but it broadcasts both ways, Victor said. Your heart rate's 10% higher than it should be. I already noticed that, I said. I programmed the nanites to absorb the scars into the skin and adjust your appearance to be as close to your original as I can, Victor said. But that will take some time. Are you sure you want to do this? You are more nervous than I am, I said. I need to do this. They're my parents. We made small talk for the rest of the trip, but every few minutes, Victor's voice wavered. Once, he choked up. What's wrong? I asked. I've remade you as perfect as I can, Victor said, but I have to let you be you. It's hard letting go when I've worried about you for the last year. I love you too, I said. Do you, do you remember our last fight before you died? You can do much better than a social phobic make-believe scientist, Victor said, his voice growing faint. Everything will change now. Don't let me hold you back. But if you need me, I'm still here. I love... Victor, what do... The train screeched to a stop, drowning out all conversation. In the rush of the crowd, I couldn't hear what he was saying, and he probably couldn't hear me. I had been angry when I called him that. I wanted to go dancing, and he wanted to stay home and watch movies with me. I left the subway and walked the short distance to the street I had grown up on. In some ways, I was coming back from a really long vacation. The old streets looked the same, but the details were different. Different cars, different decorations. My old home was a brick and stucco town home, third one in. I walked over to it, rubbing the back of my neck. I rang the doorbell. It echoed in the house. I rang it again. For me, it had only been days since I had last been here. For them, it was a lifetime ago. Maybe Victor was right. Coming here and seeing them was a terrible idea. I should go back to the apartment I shared with Victor and figured out how a formerly dead man can resume his life. The door opened. It was too late to back out. Mom answered. At first, she looked at me, but my identity remained a mystery. Then her lips made an O, and her hand went to her mouth. Large tears fell from her eyes. Adam? Hi, Mom, I said, offering her a hesitant smile. I didn't realize how much I needed to see her until I did. My chest ached, and I cried. She cried. We held each other for several long moments. How? she asked, and held me at arm's length to take a look at me. She placed a hand on my cheek. It's impossible. Victor brought me back, I said. She moaned and clutched my shoulders, then pulled me into a hug. She wouldn't stop moaning. I held her tight, as she did me. Dad came to the door, saw me. His face changed to the color of ash. Who? How? Victor's experiments worked, I said, holding Mom. Dad joined us. He spent the last year, spent everything he had, but he remade me. Mom stepped back. Are you a robot? No, I said. I'm human. A clone, Dad said. A zombie? Human, I said, just like you. Mom got out her phone and made a call. Kane, you won't believe this. Something incredible has happened. It's Adam. He's back. You get upstairs right now. No questions. 
just get to the living room. My brother still lived in the basement? One of my old neighbors saw me and ran over. Adam, it can't be. I was at your viewing. Another neighbor ran over, then another. My parents dragged me inside, crying and chattering. The house was the same, but smaller. A cremation urn stood on the mantel, with my name on it. The old me, or what was left of my body. It had my picture beside it. Kane came up from the basement, wearing an old stained bathrobe and stuffing an odd-shaped piece of black plastic in a pocket. He was unshaven, beer belly, at least fifty pounds overweight. Even Victor dressed better. Kane's girlfriend followed, wearing an old ratty t-shirt and cut-off sweats. She came up the stairs behind him. As good as Victor had rebuilt my brain, I couldn't remember her name. Maybe I had never known it. They both wore rings, husband and wife, and they were still living in our parents' basement. What is it this time, Mom? Cain said, his mouth twisting like he'd eaten a lemon. Then my brother saw me. He stood to his full height, and his hand reached into the pocket. Who are you? How dare you bother us? I smiled and walked towards him, arms outstretched. It's me, Adam. Cain backed away and scowled. He pulled out his phone. Adam's dead. I don't know what kind of sick game you're playing, but you won't get away with it. Get out of here. I'm not playing any game, I said. Victor, this is one of his stupid schemes, my sister-in-law yelled. He found a lookalike to try and get money from us. I told everybody what a creep he was, but would anybody listen? He's not a creep, I said. He put me back together while you and my brother leached off my parents. What's with you two? I've been dead for a year and you're still living in their basement? A little voice from Kane's phone said, 911, what is the nature of your emergency? My brother yelled into the phone. I have a con artist right here trying to swindle my parents. Can you send someone over? No, I'm not letting him leave. I am not a con artist, I said. I'm your brother. That's my brother, he said, pointing at the urn. Ask me anything, I said. I'll prove it to you. All that proves is how good you are at studying your victims, my sister-in-law sneered. You never change, I said. You never did like me or my boyfriend. Trying to get money from my folks, my brother said. That's low. I didn't ask for money, I said. I wanted to see my parents. I've been dead for a year, and I wanted to reconnect with my old life. Is that too much for your pea-sized brain to process? Heart rate's rising, so is blood pressure, Victor's voice said from my phone. You need... Is that the creep? You tell him that neither of you are welcome here, my sister-in-law said. Adam, what's the situation, Victor said. I don't like the readings. I'll tell you later, Vic, I said. Kane paused a moment. I'll give you this. You're good. You must have done a lot of research. The police have pulled up, my sister-in-law said. You mean, my mom said, that's not Adam? Of course I'm Adam, mom, I said. I went over to the urn and picked it up. Much of me is different, but my brain is the same. It was cremated, my brother said. You're a fake. Victor stole it before they burned it, I said, taking a deep breath to remain calm. Then he rebuilt me part by part. How's that possible, mom asked. Victor's a genius, I said. I set the urn back. Mom, I'll prove to you that I'm Adam. Do you remember the conversation we had when I was five? I told you who I was in love with and wanted to marry. You promised you'd never tell anyone. That was so long ago, Mom said. I leaned to her so nobody else heard and whispered. I had a stuffed bear I called Mr. Bowtie. She paled and clutched me. Adam, you're back? My brother yanked me away from my mom. You stay away from her. They're here, my sister-in-law said, stepping to the door and opening it before the policeman could even knock. The police entered, hand on his holster. This the man? Yes, officer, my brother said, and pointed to the picture of me. He claims to be my brother Adam, and he's here to call my parents. My brother died a year ago. Kane, you have always been a jerk. I am not trying to steal anything, I said, or con anybody. I only wanted to see my parents. That's it. Mom's lips quivered. Dad folded his arms. The officer looked at the picture. Good resemblance. Whoever you are, let's go outside and talk about this. No, I said. I came here to see my family. I've done nothing wrong. You freaked out my parents in the neighborhood, my brother yelled. You will leave and never come back. Officer, I'm pressing charges. Harassment or trespassing or stealing or identity theft or all of them. No, you're not, Mom said. That's my son. That's no more Adam than a chair, my sister-in-law said. 
Get out, Kane said. Fine, I yelled. Have you told your wife that your first kiss was with Brock? Did you tell her that you thought you had AIDS when it was only herpes? Did you tell her about that girl, Emily? My brother punched me right in the nose. Blood streamed out. I lifted my shirt to keep it from falling, revealing the bio circuitry on my skin. As fast as it started, the bleeding stopped. Thank Victor and his nanites for that. Everybody stared at me, the blood and the circuitry. My blood is silver, like mercury. Mom ran to me, wiping the silver blood from my face. Some of my blood got on her and disappeared into her skin. Monster, my sister-in-law screamed. Did you tell Mom and Dad that you might have gotten Emily pregnant? I bet your little wife doesn't know about that one, or how you got that scar on your butt. My brother backed away from me. He stared at his hand, at the few drops of silver blood as they absorbed into his skin. I don't know what you are, but Adam's dead. I was. Victor brought me back, I said. Victor remade me from old body parts he stitched together with homegrown nanites he developed in his lab. He reversed the cellular decay in every limb, even my brain. But you're too stupid to understand that. I headed out the door. Victor was right. This had been a disaster. Adam, where are you going? Mom said. That's not Adam, my brother said. Mom slapped him. If you had half the brain you pretended to have, you'd know the truth. I pushed past the officer and went outside. Two squad cars were there and three more police officers. You're not going anywhere, the officer said. Coming here was a mistake, I said. I've broken no laws. They've told me to leave and I'm leaving. I'm going back to my boyfriend. Adam, your heart rate and blood pressure is in the danger zone, Victor said from the phone. Arrest him, my brother said. He was holding something shaped like a pistol. That man is up to something. You will not arrest him, Mom said. Adam, please come back here and tell me everything. Dad stood next to her. Are you sure it's him? A mother knows, Mom said. Somehow, my boy came back to me. Maybe later, the officer said. Let's go for a ride. No, I said and kept walking. I haven't done anything wrong. Don't do this, the officer said. He fumbled at his holster. Come with us, and there won't be any problems. We'll simply talk about this down at the station. Or what? You'll shoot an unarmed man who came back from the dead, I shouted. Don't resist, another officer said. I turned around and walked away. Think about your actions very carefully, the officer said. You heard what the police said, my brother yelled. You will never come back here. Something struck me, shocked me. The ground met my face. I couldn't control my limbs. Mom screamed. Dad yelled. Cain, what did you do? I tased him, Cain said. It won't hurt him, but he won't come back here again. Somebody grabbed my arm, felt for a pulse. Get the paramedics here now. He's having a seizure like I've never seen before. Adam, talk to me, Victor yelled from the phone. Your vital signs are dropping. As I passed out, Mom collapsed like an old dish rag.